When you look up to the sky, you see an endless sea of stars, galaxies, and solar systems. But it's also an infinite plane of possibilities. Mars was once thought of only as a Martian planet too inhospitable for human life. But today, it's a whole new ballgame. By 2040, you will see the first human walk the red planet. This is the mission to Mars, Elon Musk, and the Star City. I have to say, this is so exciting. When I was born, the internet hadn't even been invented yet. Now, we're talking about sending people to Mars. It's truly an amazing time we live in right now. So, how realistic is it? Moscow, where the infamous Star City is located. The name alone is just badass. Cosmonauts of the Russian Federal Space Agency and the Soviet space program before it have lived and trained in the Star City since the 60s. In the Soviet era, the location was a highly secret and guarded military installation. Access was severely restricted. Many Russian cosmonauts, past and present, live in Star City with their families. The facility has its own post office, high school, shops, child daycare and kindergarten, movie theater, sports and recreation facilities, railway station, and a museum of space, travel, and human exploration. Mikhail Kornenko has called the Star City home for over 15 years. He recently just spent a year in space with a team of astronauts to study the effects the cosmos have on our body and more importantly our minds. This is the crucial first step in going to Mars. A round trip to Mars will take around three years. Astronauts leaving Earth's protective magnetic field will be extremely vulnerable to the sun's fast moving particles called cosmic rays. A recent study shows that compared with the healthy brain in the middle, a mouse hit by space relevant radiation on the right has fewer nerve cell branches in the green and connections in the red in its prefrontal cortex. Such mice explore less and have worse spatial memory, a cause for concern because that's what would happen to us. There are ways to protect travelers from this, like water-filled walls with green foliage, but so far it hasn't been effective enough to be considered safe by any means. Not to mention how much you will miss Earth as a whole. No more trees, water, spring, summer, fall, winter, Facebook, Twitter, pets, or friends. The emotional toll this could take on one individual could be devastating. But NASA has come up with an idea for six people to travel to the red planet comfortably with minimal homesickness. Check this out. This is NASA's traveling apartment. It doesn't have an official name, so I came up with one. Essentially, there are three separate units for the prototype. Two of the vehicles will have been launched a year and a half ahead of time. The main pod will be in low Earth orbit awaiting your arrival. The third ferry pod will already be in Martian orbit, circling Mars. The first pod will launch from Earth and connect with the main pod. The six lucky passengers will then move into the much more cozy spaceship RV and get ready for their seven month voyage. As you can see, it would be just like living in an apartment complex, but a tad more cramped at times. The only issue are those freaking cosmic rays. That brings us to Elon Musk and the Falcon 9. A massive group of young engineers are gathered inside SpaceX Mission Control Center. All of them are transfixed on the monitors inside the room. They had just launched the Falcon 9 rocket seconds ago. After a few minutes, the booster separates from the second stage, which continues towards orbit. Instead of falling into the ocean, the booster flips over and fires its engines twice more to slow and guide it to a soft landing at a nearby pad pictured here on the right. When the Falcon 9 booster descends at supersonic speed through Earth's thin upper atmosphere, it's in Mars-like conditions. The success at Cape Canaveral last December and subsequent landings on a ship offshore are why so many people are now saying that sending humans to Mars is plausible. And by the way, I suggest you watch the video of the Falcon 9 landing. It is incredible. These reusable rockets are going to be key in ensuring a safe landing on Mars. In fact, Musk has already shared their technology with NASA. Good opportunities to go to Mars occur roughly every two years based on its position relative to Earth and the Sun. NASA is studying launch windows that are decades away. In the most likely scenario, 
astronauts would spend about 500 days on Mars waiting for the next window to come home. Nearly 50 possible landing spots have already been identified. They are in areas of scientific interest with resources such as water-rich deposits and within 50 degrees of the equator, which it's easiest to launch a rocket home. So let's say you do make it to the red planet safely. What would it be like? The first humans to walk on Mars will be stepping into a harsh, unforgiving environment. The thin atmosphere would partially protect them from solar radiation, but they would need to shield themselves from cosmic rays. They'd also have to utilize scant Martian resources for their oxygen and water. You would also need to cover these four critical needs. For shorter visits, you would need temporary shelter. NASA is testing a flexible life support structure that recycles all water, air, and waste. For a longer stay, there would need to be long-term shelter. One option for creating permanent shelters involves using the soil found on Mars to create building materials. To build structures and important agricultural sites, you would need, and this is cool, a Z2 suit. Astronauts would slide into and out of this flexible spacesuit through a suit port in the back, which would attach directly to the outside of a pressurized shelter or rover. And how in the world would you get around safely? You would drive around in pressurized rovers, which are able to support two people for a fortnight and travel about 60 miles at a time. It could be used to aid exploration missions on the surface. Well, I know what you are thinking. Can anyone go? The short answer is yes. Elon Musk is absolutely determined to get people to Mars by 2025, while NASA's more realistic perspective puts us there around 2040. But it'll cost you up to 500 big ones, and you'll have to go through rugged and strict screening processes. A certain kind of personality is needed for a Mars mission. Someone who can tolerate isolation and boredom during the long commute, then shift into overdrive once arriving on Mars. Someone who's mentally resilient and has excellent social skills. These traits may or may not correlate with the ability to pay $500,000, which is SpaceX's criterion. And if that weren't enough, there is also the cost of actually building the rocket, sending people with enough clean air, food, water, while providing enough resources to keep them alive on Mars for well over a year. It ain't cheap. The Apollo moon landings cost about 140 billion with a B dollars. A realistic journey to Mars would cost at least that much. A fully loaded plan put forward under President George H.W. Bush had a price tag of 450 billion dollars. And NASA's annual budget for all human spaceflight is around 9 billion dollars. I know that sounds like a lot, but during the moon race with the Soviet Union, NASA got more than 4% of the federal budget. Now, it only gets a half percent. Whether we end up there in 2025 or 2040, the fact that making it to Mars is now a possibility could be the next step in our evolution. Elon Musk envisions a terraform planet in which people can eventually live if Earth ever gets too inhospitable, while NASA would like to harvest resources from Mars rather than colonize it. Whatever happens, it will truly be a monumental day, a lot like when we landed on the moon back in 69. And who knows, maybe you will be the first person to walk the red planet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't be shy. Leave a comment and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And please don't forget to subscribe for fantastic new videos. Until next week, class dismissed.